Me through every brick wall I done ran myself into, man. And it's love that has brought me before y'all here today. So let's fight. It's real. When I ain't feeling good, man, when I'm sick, running a fever, man. It's love that got me sitting in front of y'all, man, and shining. Still glowing, man. Ain't nothing stopping us, man. Love is unstoppable, man. When I thought love was a weakness, man. See that touch? You? <laughs> yeah. Little did I know, man, my <laughs> That's what drove me, man. My brain was twisted up in the wrong thing. Ain't nobody to blame but me. It's a trip. If you know who you owe. But love is free to give. As you should. Does that mean you gotta kiss everybody's ass? No. Certainly you gotta kiss nobody's ass, man. Tough love is the thing. You know, I stay one deep, man. That's what my neck says. So one right here says deep across, baby. I love everybody, but I stick to myself. That way, if you on your path, man, I'm on my path. I ain't got to worry about you hurting me, man. Or you ain't got to worry about me hurting you. I'm in my zone. But us, we here, y'all. So it's about that time to open up your ears and let me crawl into your mind. Cause with us, it ain't never, ever been this person. Who? What it was, y'all. Y'all already know who it is, man. And if not, y'all see it. <laughs> and y'all tuned in with priceless knowledge yourself. And this right here, man, this ain't shit but a little cosmic insight, y'all. And in this case, guess what? We have reached our last and final installment in this series of Chiron in the houses, man. You know, we will eventually talk about Chirons and the signs, but that's more generational. So, you know, that that's not going to affect us as personally as it was with the houses. That's why I brought us the houses first. But right here, we in the last installment, y'all. We brought it to a culmination for real. And so once we get done with this, you can go back and reference whatever house your Chiron's in. OK. And when we get to talk about the signs with it, we'll talk about what the signs are. But I wouldn't hold your breath because that's going to be a little bit down the line, man. We got something else coming in this next cycle. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put y'all up on game. We're going to close out the Saturn series this week. And we're going to close um, Saturn in the houses. And we're going to close out Black Moon Lilith in the signs. OK. So, hey, man. We rocking and jocking, man. You know what I'm saying? We got it cracking. So what we gonna do now though is uh talk a little something, something about those people that have Chiron in the eleventh house of the natal chart. Yeah. What about your friends? <laughs> Real shit though. You know what I'm saying? So here we are, y'all. And like we always do, man, we're going to give a little bit about the meaning of Chiron in astrology first. We're going to talk about the energy that comes along with it, the mythology with it, and how it might affect you. And then we're going to talk about what the 11th house of the astrolog astrological chart is actually all about. I'm going to ask y'all to bear with me again, man. I'm running a fever. 
I'm not feeling great, man. You know what I'm saying? My vibration is high, but my energy is low. And that's all right, though, because I know how to do my goddamn thing, man. My low energy <laughs> is killing most everybody else's extreme highs, man. And that's because I'm driven by love, baby. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get it cracking, y'all. So, despite being one of the most recently discovered celestial bodies, which was like in 1977 when it was on a transit between Uranus and Saturn, you know, Chiron's power is widely acknowledged throughout all astrologies because <laughs> it comes through and hits you hard, man. And the mythology behind it is basically this. His mother was a water nymph who was extremely beautiful and alluring and was heavily pursued by either Cronus or Zeus. I've heard it told a few different ways and by different people. So I'm going to say either one of those. And she wasn't really having it. She was terrified. And so she ran and ran and ran. And eventually so much so that she turned herself into a horse so that she could keep running. But the thing is, not before she ended up getting God, man. And, you know, because even after that, like she was continually sexually abused by this entity. And so eventually she, before she got, she, before <laughs> she turned herself into a horse, she ended up getting pregnant is what I meant to say, man, you know, unfortunately. And so she was in agony about it. She had this baby. And as, as soon as she had the baby, she prayed and prayed and prayed to be turned into a tree. And ultimately she was. And the thing with this baby is, you know, this baby was a centaur, meaning that he was half God, you know, a quarter human and a quarter horse. And so being a centaur, they were known for being wild, for being savage, for being brutal and having no morals. But he was different off the rip, despite not having his mama, no mama, who was a motherfucking tree and not having no daddy because he's a deadbeat ass God. Uh, ain't going there. Um, he blossomed. He flourished. He became philosophical. He, he learned to live with empathy. He learned to be a great, highly known teacher and a well-skilled healer throughout all the lands, man. And people came to him. And one day, as he was taking a quiver of poison arrows to one of his students, he actually dropped one and it pierced his own leg and poisoned him. But him, usually that would kill anybody off the rip, but him being a son of God, it just put him in terrible pain all the time. And he can't die in that manner. So he's in constant pain. He's in constant agony. Can't walk right. He fucked up. And so he's praying and begging to be taken out of his misery, to be allowed to or let die. And, and thanks for his teaching and his healings, you know, the gods granted him his mercy. They allowed him to leave that plane of existence. And what they did is instead they placed him in the sky to bring healing to us. And so that's just Chiron, the wounded healer. And Chiron's position in the chart, it really reveals where we've been wounded. And also where there is an opportunity for discovering healing from within through acknowledgement and accountability. Yeah. And then, you know, sharing this discovery with others is going to bring it all the way about, man, because healing begins healing through compassion for the suffering of others and never forget that. And I can also say that by the position of Chiron, by house and sign, it can also share where we show where we might have talent and access to ancient wisdom or at least where we can, you know, where we might depart from the mainstream in service to a higher practicality. Yeah. And, you know, those with prominent Chiron placements are likely to be awesome educators and spiritual healers. Like I have Chiron in 8,000 Gemini, so I feel like my shit is probably. <laughs> ego check, y'all. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to check my own ego, okay? <laughs> so when we talk about what the 11th house of the, or, of the chart is, man, the 11th house, you know, this can show the gains from the, the, the profession or the, the career that we had in the 10th house with our midheaven. And let me also say that the 11th house is this, is ruled by the sign of Aquarius and the planets of, of Uranus and Saturn together. And it's here that we kind of find our goals and objectives too, our hopes, our dreams, you know, and, you know, this can also where we, where we see our friendships and memberships of any kind of certain group or associations that we're associated with and the work in society you know that we did that was representing the 10th house is released released through the unique individual expression doing the activities and exhibiting the energies of whatever planets that might show up in the 11th house you get what i'm saying and so that's kind of what that's all about you know this is the gain your gains it's not your possessions like the second house. This is your gains. This is your gains. This is your friendships. You get what I'm saying? This is any association to any groups. You know, this is 
what comes of the, the, the ten towers. You get what I'm saying a little bit. And so when we talk about putting Chiron, the wounded healer in the eleven towers, you know, I've seen this manifest more than a fucking few different ways, y'all. But what really having a wounded healer here does more than anything else is, you know, it shows that these folks' deepest wounds reside in their friendships and or their sense of hope. Yeah. Or even more telling, the lack thereof. Yeah. <laughs> they often feel rejected by others, which, of course, you know, that kind of leads them to feel pretty lonely. And they already know they're unique and, you know, they know inherently that they ain't for everybody. These are people that know that. So instead, they try to, they kind of try to seek out other motherfuckers who feel like outcasts like themselves, man, in order to feel connected to something. And, you know, they're often at the same time going to be really amazing at helping these same people that are outcasts that they sought out by themselves, you know, feel seen and feel included. But still, they themselves kind of feel like they end up getting stuck on the outside looking in because now they didn't help these people integrate and they still stuck out here like they don't know what to do. And, you know, it's extremely fucking imperative that 11th House Chiron people kind of learn to recognize that we all are divine beings, man, <laughs> and that we really all are infinitely interconnected and we all belong everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Not just with those who are of like minds as ourselves, man. Different opinions and different perspectives help out the whole collective, man. And there ain't no motherfucking such thing as knowing your motherfucking place. I don't care who says that, man. There's no such thing as that. That's fuck shit. Yeah, you ain't no such thing as, nigga, you better know your place. Nah, you got me fucked up. Ain't no such thing as knowing your place. Understand? <laughs> you know, what there is... There is a such thing, you know, as uh, <laughs> playing your position. I can tell you that. Playing your position. But it ain't the same thing, man. It ain't the same thing. And that's a whole other conversation that ain't for today. But understand that there ain't no such thing as staying in your place. But there is a such thing as playing your position till you get where you want to go. That's some game. Free game. <laughs> Real talk, man. And, you know, back to what I was saying, though, a lot of times these people, they kind of come across as pretentious in a way, or they kind of, you know, kind of reject other people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times that they don't feel like we're fit into their own jaded perception of what one of their friends would look like. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy because now they put their self in a box when they didn't reach. I only fuck with these certain type of individuals, outcast individuals who are like myself when really they should, what they want to do is be included. So they should fuck with everybody. Like everybody should fuck with everybody. You just, you trying to stay, stick with, you know, this is our spot. You know what I'm saying? One time I listened to this dude, who was it? Tony Bellew. He's a, he was a light heavyweight, a cruiserweight champion in boxing. And when he got up on there, he said, I'm the champion of the misfits. Hey, man. And they, the misfits in the crowd went crazy. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful. But what about the person? What about being a champion of just everybody? You know what I'm saying? I understand. I understood where he was coming from, but I'm just saying, man, he just did, did that, doing that right there, put himself into a box. And that's kind of what the same theme is here, man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you can't just not fuck with somebody because they don't fit into that misfit category, man. Like, nah, you're too, you know what I'm saying? Nah, you're too cool for me. A motherfucker will see somebody. This, yeah, that's the type of shit I'm seeing when I'm feeling this in my, in, in, in my intuition, man. Like, this is a motherfucker that looks at somebody like, nah, man, you're popular. You're too cool for me. I'm not fucking with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy, man. You know, that's crazy, but it is what it is, man. Like, <laughs> they really kind of, uh, have this fear of other people not fucking with them. And so, you know, they, they have, they do this thing where they select their friends uh, by what they think is going to work out or not, which is crazy. It's crazy, man. You can't do that. This is real analyzing your friends. You know what I'm saying? This is some real Uranus Aquarius energy, man. 
And the healing is really going to only start when they start learning how to establish connections without preconceived notions of how it's going to go in those connections, man. And one way that I, I, I read to look at things and what I've tried to learn how to apply, I forgot what book I read it in or what author said it. And I usually would love to quote that. But one of the things that I read was that you need to meet and, and deal with everybody and understand that everybody you meet is your guru. And what I mean by that is that you have something to gain from every interaction, just as everyone else has something to gain by coming into contact with you. Real talk, man. <laughs> and like I said, everybody and you if you haven't heard this before, you should take this into concept, man. When you deal with people in life, they're either going to be a blessing or a lesson, man. And it's not up to them how to, how it comes across. It's up to you how it comes across, man. And that's just how it is. That's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? And let me also put y'all up on a little game, man. Chiron and Uranus have been a major aspect to each other for most of the 20th and 21st centuries, man. And we all know that the last uh, 100 years, you know, it has been centered around social issues that, you know, revolve around inclusion and equal rights. You know what I'm saying? Not just race and gender, but sexuality and spirituality as well, man. They they, All that has kind of come into the forefront. And, you know, Chiron in the 11th house, what that really does is often indicates a trauma that has been kind of made this person shut down emotionally, which it makes it much harder to get into, get to the root of the issue because, you know, they don't have a necessarily emotional response to any of this shit. You know what I'm saying? The culture issues, the personal issues, they're friends, man. Like they don't have an emotional response to any of it. And, you know, the thing is, they also might not even remember, you know, what fucked them up initially. They just feel a certain numbness and an inability to connect with others on an emotional level. So, you know, they see all this going on culturally and they want to feel something, but they don't feel nothing. And until they learn to, you know, accept themselves and their own you know, feelings of individuality, they won't never feel nothing. Another way that I've seen this manifest is a motherfucker that always seems to know what's best for everybody else. And, you know, but they're constantly stuck in toxic cycles and abusive relationships themselves, which is crazy, man. You know, if you were the daughter of an abusive father or mother, for that matter, man, and you find yourself with an abusive husband in an abusive relationship, it's up to you to break that cycle. And likewise, man, you know what I'm saying? Men, if you were the son of an abusive or neglectful motherfuckers, man, you know, and you're using that as an excuse to fuck up other motherfuckers' lives, man, like, nah, man, you are no longer the motherfucking victim, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're the motherfucking problem. And you got to realize that. Do you do you have to remain so? <laughs> Fucking absolutely not, man. Break the cycle. Chiron is about breaking cycles, man. It's about breaking toxic cycles in friendships, in self, at work, in our mind, in our fears, our sexuality, our communication, our values, our belief systems, our friendships. And if you could just remember, just because you built like that, you don't have to build like that. You'll be all right either way. We have all this energy in all of our charts, man. Especially when we're talking about Chiron in the 11th house, man. Chiron is going to always be tied to Uranus and Saturn, man. So this is that type of energy, man. This is that type of energy, man. And what you do with it is what you do with it, man. I appreciate all the love and support, man. Like I said, this concludes our Chiron in the houses series, man. Tomorrow. Or I'm not tomorrow. Later this week, we're going to shut down the Saturn in the House of Series and the Black Moon Lilith in the Science Series. I'm not saying tomorrow. I take that back because I'm sick and I have a reading to do it. I don't even know if I'm going to make it, man. I love everybody. I appreciate all the love and support, man. If you're interested in any readings, either hit me up in the comments below or email me at mr.turner1300 at gmail.com. Y'all, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll holler at y'all later on, man. I'm finna have to lay down for a minute because I'm not feeling it. I love y'all though.